Hello everyone. Well, as promised, I wanted to um, just share with you a few more examples of some of the types of problems we've been working on and kind of remind you of some of the learning targets that you need to have under your belt for this particular unit of study on exponents and um, logarithms. Okay. So one of the things that is going to be important as we continue to move forward is to be able to expand a logarithm and then also to be able to express the logarithm as a single quantity. Okay. So I'm just going to do one of each real quick and we'll just kind of keep moving th through this and, and see if we can make this a quick video. It's not going to be super quick, but we'll see how we do. Okay. So for this particular problem, I've chosen to do number eight right here. This is from page 12, I believe, from your workbook. And what I like to do is I like to make sure that uh, square roots or cube roots or any kind of a root is first changed to an exponent. So I know the square root of a is the same as a to the 1 half, and I have a c squared in my denominator, which means because it is division that when I write this and expand this, I'm going to have a to the 1 half minus log of c squared. And I always like to deal with the um, multiplication slash addition or division slash subtraction first, and then tackle this aspect of using the drop down rule. Okay, so our final answer for this particular problem would be 1 half log of a minus 2 log c. All right, there we go. And now we'll kind of go in reverse and we'll take one the opposite direction. I've chosen this one down at the bottom of page 12, I believe it is, number 15, right here. And, uh, and, and then I kind of do things in the reverse. So since we did the multiplication slash addition and division slash subtraction piece first when we're expanding, um, we're going to do it last as we're bringing it back together. So I'm going to go ahead and just write, bring these multipliers up, reverse of the drop down rule, and write a new expression that is log of c squared minus, in parentheses, log of, what is it going to be, a cubed. And because the 3 is inside the parentheses, it's only going to be applied to that little a term right there. And then these parentheses are going to make a difference in this particular problem because um, we are actually going to be bringing these together with multiplication before the division piece happens. So uh, if the parentheses were not there, it might look a little bit different. All right, maybe you could think of what that might look like if, without the parentheses right, because it is going to be different. So we have log of c squared minus, in parentheses, log of a cubed times b. And we're still not done because there are still two logs in the expression. I only want one, logarithm of a single quantity. So the subtraction is going to create this kind of an outcome at the very, very end a cubed times b. And that's it. All right, so as I uh, continue to do the next problem, don't forget at any time in any of the videos that we're working on, if you would like to um, stop the video and try the problems, I've circled the problems I'm going to be doing in light blue, so you can, you know, try them first if you would like prior to um, watching my explanation of them. So these next ones that we're going to work on, uh, let's see, what were they from page 16? We weren't really assigned page 16, but we did do some work with graphing and inverses. And I just wanted to show you a little uh, trick for especially the, the graphing piece when we get to that. Okay. So we know that finding inverses is going to mean we're going to have to make a choice, and I've talked to some of you about this, between um, switching your x and your y or rewriting first or second, right? So you can either 
go down this path first of switching your X and Y, then do a rewrite, or you can rewrite your logarithm uh, with exponents first and then, and then do your switch on your X and Y values and solve for your inverse. So we'll do one of each, I think. So on number 25, and again, if you want to try it on your own, just stop the video, try them, and then kind of watch how, how things roll out. That's always a really good study tool to do that. Okay, so what did we say we are going to try first? The switch? All right, here we go. So this is what I'm starting with. y equals log 3 of x minus 1. And so I want to switch my x and my y. So I get x is equal to log base 3 of y minus 1. And now I'm going to rewrite. Now that I have these uh, x's and y's switched, so it's going to be, the rewrite is going to look like this. It's going to be 3 to the x is equal to y minus 1. And to get y by itself, we are going to just do that last step of adding 1 to each side. And there you go. So that would be f inverse of f of x if it was in that notation is 3 to the x plus 1. Okay. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, so we switched and then did a rewrite on that one. On this one, we're going to do a rewrite first and then switch. Okay. And this one is a little bit tricky because I need to do a little isolating before I get going on number 27. So I'm going to rewrite this negative 5 because the um, 5 fourths, the entire fraction, is not being raised to the x, I'm going to rewrite this as negative 1 fourth times 5 to the x, just like that. Okay. I think it's be important uh, that you guys remember that before you can do a rewrite, you're going to need to isolate that base and exponent. So for this particular problem, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply both sides by a negative 4 first. So we have negative 4, negative 4. And so it looks like what we're working with is negative 4y is equal to 5x. Okay, so we said we were going to do a rewrite first, so let's do that. So this is going to be log base 5 of negative 4y is equal to x. And now we're going to do the switch, right? So we get log base 5 of negative 4x, right? That expression is equal to y. And that is your inverse. Ta-da! OK. Um, sometimes if there's a lot of work going on here, it may feel easier to get the switch over with right away. But again, it's kind of up to you. Your choice. Okay. So graphing. This is my advice to you when graphing a logarithmic equation. Um, I really, 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 really like to graph the parent function first. So I'm going to do 39 and I'm going to pause things um, and then I'll just splash the answer for 40 up there. But I'm going to do 39 and then I'd, I would like you to try 40 on your own. I mean, just give it a shot, right? What we're really looking for is we're looking for, you can kind of see the horizontal and vertical transformation coming out right here and then coming out right here. And the tricky part of this is we want to be able to do this without a calculator. Ooh, yikes. That might feel scary for some of us, but we're going to go for it and make it happen. Okay. So just one second, let's go ahead. And um, my first thing I want to do before I have this transformation of right two and up four, right? Because I can see eventually I'm going to have this transformation here of right two and up four of my log equation. And that's going to be a transformation of y equals the log base 3 of x. So this is essentially its kind of parent function before we start talking about any transformations. So hopefully that kind of makes sense to everyone. 
And what I like to do to graph these, because I have a hard time wrapping my head around like what numbers to actually put into X for X to, um, to figure out what, what Y would be. So I like to kind of do it in reverse. I like to make my XY table. Okay, so we're just gonna kind of play with this a little bit. And I'm gonna do a rewrite I'm going to rewrite this in terms of exponents. So it would be 3 raised to the y is equal to x. Okay, that I can wrap my head around a little bit better, right? Like I can think of things I could put in for y. Like I could put in a negative 2, and that would be 3 to the negative 2 would be 1 over 3 squared, so that would be 1 ninth, right? I can do some mental math on these uh, numbers. Let's see. 3 raised to the negative 1, if I put that in for y, would mean that my x value would be 1 third. Then I can go to 0. That's going to be an easy one, right? That's always going to be 1. 1 and 2. Let's see. 3 to the first power is 3, and 3 squared is 9. So now I have a set of points that I can actually graph. So let me try and graph these super quick. And remember, before we have any transformations whatsoever, for our logarithmic function, we have a, a vertical asymptote, all right? Kind of an inverse function of exponentials, right? So that should make sense. Kind of a reflection over the line y equals x. So if I plot the point 1 ninth negative 2, it's going to be right about there, and then my negative, uh, let's see, one-third and negative one. Ooh, still pretty tiny. And then I have x equals one, y equals zero. And let's see, three, one. And this is almost gonna be off my grid, but nine, two, right? So we can kind of see what this original, whoops, it's not a super good line right there. But that would be my original graph before the transformation. So now, guys, all we have to do is apply this transformation. Write 2 up 4. And I'm going to do that for every single point. So here we go. Let's start with this one. Uh, let's see. Write 2 and up. 1, 2, 3, 4. It's kind of off my grid. That's okay. This one's going to be write 2. 1, 2, 3, 4. My point that is at 1, 0 is going to be right 2, and up 1, 2, 3, 4. And then, of course, let's see. What do we have? These other points that are tiny, tiny, tiny coming down. Right 2, tiny, tiny, tiny right here, and up 1, 2, 3, 4. And another one right there. Now we should be, let's see, did I get... I got off a little bit. Let's see, right to this whole thing should be shifting to as well. So they're more like here and here. So I know my asymptote has actually shifted um, to the right as well. These need to get out of there. Okay, so here's my new graph, right? My new graph has been shifted and transformed and now I can do things like talk about the domain all right so we're gonna I'm gonna test you guys in about two shakes here we're gonna talk about the domain we're gonna talk about the range all right and I know want to know the equation of the asymptote all right and you should know all of these things you should be able to do these pieces so the domain on this particular problem is going to be from 2 to infinity, okay? Soft bracket on the 2 there because that's where our asymptote is. The range should be from negative infinity to infinity. When you're putting those into Schoology, always make sure you put negative infinity first and then infinity because it's going from smallest to largest. And then our asymptote, because it is a vertical line, is that x is equal to 2. Okay, I'm going to leave you guys for a minute. I'm going to put number 40 in the video, and so it's going to appear super speedy in just about two seconds. Magic. Just like that, it appears. So how'd you do? 
kind of take a look at that. Um, we're going to scoot along. So if you need to come back and kind of take a peek at how you think you did, then do that. I forgot to cross my T. My word right. There it is. I was speeding through it. All right, guys, let's uh, continue. All right. A little bit of review with our ideas for solving. Just a couple things to say about that and maybe do a couple real quick problems. And I'm actually going to push us into um, a story problem, which is kind of where we're headed next with using logarithms and exponential functions to, uh, oh, that one got a little bit crazy. There we go. Um, so remember we talked about making choices, all right? Is this going to be an equation that I have to rewrite it in log form? Or is this going to be an equation for an, where in order to solve, I'm going to have to take the log of both sides? Or maybe removing the log from both sides is going to be your plan of attack? Or maybe it's already in log form and you need to rewrite it in exponential form. So all of these are kind of things to consider and, and look at and maybe make choices about. So, uh, so let's try a couple, all right? Kind of keep those four ideas of things we might do in mind. All right, let's get after this. Um, this is from page 18. I'm just taking a couple of problems, these odd problems. Maybe you've already tried them. And, or maybe you're still kind of needing some help and working through some of these. Uh-oh, this is the one. I think what I'll do is I think I'll just do 15. Um, on 13, I'll talk you through it real quick. If you haven't done this one yet, um, you're going to need to add 5 to both sides. Well, maybe we'll just tackle it. Let's see. Let's add 5 to both sides, and we get 6.5 times 3 raised to the 4b plus 7 um, is equal to 87. And now I'm going to divide both sides by 6.5. So let's see. i got to... Take a second, get my calculator out here, and make that happen. Okay, so 87 divided by 6.5. Oh, that's a fun little decimal that we have to work with. Love it. Okay, not really. Okay, so this is going to be 3 to raised to the 4b plus 7. And because we're carrying this out to about four decimal places, this is about, let's see, 13.3846. Whoa, rogue writing. 13.3846. Okay. So now that you've isolated your base and your exponent, now we can either do one of two things. We can either rewrite or we can take the log of both sides. I'm just going to go ahead and rewrite it over here. So I'm going to call this log base 3 of 13.3846, right, is equal to 4b plus 7. And what we're going to have to do here is we're going to actually have to take, um, do a change of base. So we're going to take the log of 13.3846 and divide it by the log of 3. And after we get that decimal, that is when we're going to proceed with solving by subtracting 7 and dividing by 4. All right, so I'm actually going to... Um, make this happen on my calculator and while I'm doing that you guys could try to be making this happen on your calculator right so it looks like after I subtract 7 and then divide by 4 that we end up with a b value that is negative 1 point 1597, 1597, if we are rounding to the nearest 10,000th, okay? So again, I know I skipped a lot of steps there, but um, just kind of talking you through that piece. Once you have this decimal, subtract your 7, divide by your 4, and then you're golden, okay? You would follow a similar... Um, Similar idea here with number 15. 
And so that was an example of doing a rewrite. Um, we could also take the log of both sides and um, solve the equation that way. All right. I don't think I have one. Oh, I do have one. Uh, number 17 right up back up here on this page. See how it says, um, oh, we're just condensing that one. A little bit higher up, right here, where it has log 15, right here, number 11. Log 15 of 10 minus x and log base 15 of negative 3x minus 9. That would be a, this. that would be this hint right here remove the log from both sides of the equation. So if just like you can apply a logarithm to both sides of the equation, you can also remove it. So we're essentially just taking it out of there. And we end up with 10 minus x is equal to a negative 3x minus 9. And on this one, it looks like we can add the 9 to both sides and add an x. And then we end up with a negative 19 halves equal to x, okay? So if you do recognize that there's a log on both sides, then by all means make that happen, okay? Both sides of your equation. All right, let's come on down here and look at what we can do with an applied problem. Um, solving an equation like this, let's see, how much farther do we go? Perfect, right down here. Okay, so this is where we're heading. Ladies and gentlemen, this is where we're, we're heading next. I'm given this crazy, crazy formula that is about endangered species, all right? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna first use this formula to find the predicted population of the American bald eagle in 20 years. And so this one is pretty straightforward because that 20 years is going to go right in there for t for time so essentially um, sometimes an equation that you're going to be given is going to be about just plugging things in as is the case with this problem so it's going to be 500 and then divided by 1 plus 83.33 e natural base raised to the negative 0.162 times 20 20 years now i'm gonna take a minute and put this into my calculator you guys take a minute and put it into your calculator I would suggest that you bracket or put some kind of a parenthesis around this thing that you are dividing by because sometimes if we forget to do that, we end up only dividing by one part of our um, expression rather than the entire denominator that you see right here. Okay, you guys try, I'll try, we'll be right back. All right, well, let's see if we, did you guys find the little e to the x button on your calculator? It is right above the natural log button that looks like that, okay? That's a helpful little little hint for future use. I got 117. So after 20 years, 100, uh, oops, 117, I said that and then didn't write that. Um, so 117.27, but we're not going to, of course, report you know, one fifth of an eagle. So here we go, or a quarter of an eagle. So um, about 117 eagles, right? After that 20 years. Now, here's where this power of utilizing the logarithms is really gonna get fantastic for us. Last example, here we go. When will, will the population be 300? Well, that means we're plugging in 300 over here for population uh, at a certain time, and we don't know what that time's gonna be, but we're gonna solve for it. So we are going to start by, this is gonna be a crazy, this might go down the page for a little bit, e raised to the 0.162t. All right. 
So we're trying to get that little exponent, that time, um, by itself so we can figure it out. I'm going to multiply both sides of my equation by this entire denominator. And then in one fell swoop, I'm also going to divide by 300. So it's going to actually look like this. 1 plus 83.33, just in the spirit of kind of keeping time rolling, 0.162t is equal to 500 divided by 300. And we're going to want to subtract 1 next. Okay, so we're going to be subtracting 1. So it's going to be 83e162 is equal to, it turned out to be 1.6 repeating, as we would imagine it to be. And we're going to subtract 1 from that. And then we're going to be dividing both sides by 83.33, right? We're isolating that base. This is the part we're trying to get by itself. Do, 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 right there. Okay. So let's go ahead and divide that two thirds by 83.33. We'll see what we get. Okay, I'm going to march this up just a smidge. There we go, guys. Let's keep moving on this. So we ended up with natural base E raised to the negative 0.162 times time is equal to, and I got a 0 0.008, essentially. Okay, now, because we are using E, which is a natural base, we are going to use a natural log. So we're going to take the natural log of both sides of this equation. So look what happens when we take the natural log. This is, this is kind of cool stuff. We'll talk about it a little bit more in class. Um, natural log of 0 0.008. We can use the drop-down rule because we've taken the natural log of both sides, and we get negative 0.162t times the natural log of E, natural log of 0 0.008. And here's what is fancy about taking the natural log as opposed to uh, log base 10 is this value, natural log of E, is actually equal to 1. Okay, so imagine that. We have a negative 0.162t times 1 now. So that's handy because our last step is just going to be to divide both sides by 0.162. Okay, so I'm trying to make this happen sort of quickly, just in the interest of time, but also get it right, because <laughs> that would be helpful, right? Okay, so let's try it. So we need natural log of, let me clear that, natural log of 0.008 divided by negative 0.162. 29? Wow. Does that even make sense? Hmm, let's think about this. I got t was equal to 29. Actually, 29.8. All right. So all, each time you do an applied problem, you want to make sure that, that things are jiving with, you know, your, your numbers are making sense for what you're thinking about here. And I just want to remind you that when we plugged in a 20, right, when we plugged in a 20 into the formula, that was 20 years, and we had 117 eagles. Okay. And for this particular problem, we want 300 eagles. So that's a lot more, which means it should take more time. And sure enough, oh yeah, 29.8, so almost 30 years. Okay, that seems about right. Then it would be between 29 to 30 years, right, that it would take for the population to grow to that amount. All right. 
So a little preview of where we're taking this, guys. I hope that this has been so helpful to you, and I look forward to seeing you in class. All right. See you later.